My name is Asia Sampson, and today on Baptism Overland, I'm going to tell you how I f***ed up and how I plan to fix it. All right, quick warning, this is not just an install video. Yes, we're gonna be installing some fender flares on the Jeep, but if you have those fender flares at home right now and you need an instructional on how to put them on, there are a ton of other videos that will get right to that and you can just follow along and be done. All right, let me just wait for a couple of people to click away. Indulge me for a second, okay? Because I sometimes make mistakes. I actually, let me correct that most of the times I make mistakes. Now about a year and a half ago, I was approached by a company asking if I wanted to install their fender flares on my Jeep. And when you're a content creator in your infancy, you get very excited about that, right? Like I remember thinking to myself, oh my God, somebody actually wants to send me stuff to install or somebody wants to send me stuff to review. And I was just saying yes to everything, one, because I needed the content, and two, I was just really excited that somebody actually noticed this channel. And so I said yes. I was like, yeah, send it over. We'll do an install video. But but in the, in the pit of my stomach, I, I was having second thoughts because to be honest, I actually really like the OEM fenders on the Jeep. I just think it looks classic. It looks like it was meant to be there. But really the only reason I said yes was because the OEM fenders that I had was starting to fade already. And I was just like, you know what? Let's just switch them out. So the fenders came, I put them on, we did an install video. In fact, I'll link to the video below if you wanna watch it. But I really wasn't that ecstatic about them. I mean, they were fine, it just took a while to get used to. In fact, if you watch the other video, You'll see at the very end that I wasn't like the super excited about how it looked. It was fine for what it was. The good news is at the time my gut told me don't make this a permanent install. And thank God for that because these things need to go. All right, so let me show you why I'm really not feeling this whole setup so much anymore. Mainly is that this thing is so thin that every time we hit the trails and we're going through mud or we're going through water crossings, it's just splashing all of that stuff along the entire side of my Jeep, all the way up to my windows to where I can't even see out of them anymore. And I know there's something to be said about having the thinner fenders, it gives you a lot more articulation. You can see all the room that I have here but it's just now becoming more of a nuisance than it is advantageous. Secondly, this fender is pretty cheap. Like the construction is horrible. The powder coating that's on it was not applied very well at all. I'm already getting rusting. I can actually peel some of this powder coating off. The good news is that when I install these fenders, I had the foresight of knowing that I will probably be switching them out later. See, the thing with fenders is when you replace your stock fenders with aftermarket ones, these aftermarket companies will give you ways of securing that new fender to your Jeep pretty much permanently, whether that's rib nuts or some other means. The problem is that not every fender company uses the exact same mounting holes. So if you put a fender on here that you might switch out later and you start putting permanent rib nuts everywhere, well, when you go and switch it out, if that new company doesn't use the same mounting holes, well, you're kind of screwed. So what I did was I just went and used regular bolts so that this can just come right off and all the holes will still pretty much be stuck. So when I put the fenders that I do want, I can make that permanent and I haven't kind of messed up all the holes that are on here already. But anyway, enough talking. I am just way too excited to finally get rid of these things. So let's remove all four fenders and then I'll show you what it is I'm replacing it with. Since these are aftermarket fenders, I won't go through how to remove them because it might be different from yours if you're also replacing aftermarket fenders. If you're removing factory fenders, you can watch my previous video or refer to the instructions that came with your new Bushwhacker fenders. So the main thing you really have to consider when you're buying new fenders for your Jeep is you have to choose between metal or plastic. I'm gonna tell you right now, this is the part where it gets really, really debatable because everybody has an opinion about this. Metal, pros with those, well, obviously they're gonna be stronger. Like they can get hit, they can get dinged, they can take a beating. Second, metal is not gonna fade like ABS plastic, especially when it's sitting out in the sun and it starts to look really horrible and you have to recondition it once in a while or try to get the shine on it back. And then third, well, you could stand on metal. Like, I know that might not seem like a lot to some of you, but for someone like me, 
I have stood on my fenders many a times to be able to get stuff off the roof, to get into the roof rack. Now the downside about metal fenders, unless they're aluminum, well, they're prone to rusting, as you can see. Especially if the fenders are cheap and the company didn't powder coat it correctly, eventually that powder coating will start to chip off, the rust will start to eat away at it, and before you know it, you're looking at it like, damn, this is horrible. Secondly, the fenders are heavier. Like, these ones were light, but if you're gonna move up to some of those more heftier metal fenders that you see a lot of people go off-roading with, well, you're adding weight to your vehicle. Whether that's something you can handle or not, that's really totally up to you. I know that for me, I'm trying to lessen the weight and not add more weight because I've already added a ton of weight to this thing that I don't wanna add even more. And then the last thing about metal fenders that a lot of people don't think about, because they're metal, whatever impact they take, it's gonna transfer that to the body of your vehicle. So if you're like off-roading and you somehow tip to the side and you bang up against the rock like really hard, that energy is just gonna get transferred to the body of your vehicle and now your, the body of your vehicle is gonna get all dented and messed up. Consider that because a lot of people don't necessarily think about that. But let's say you decide to go with ABS plastic fenders. Well, ABS plastic fenders are gonna cost you much less than metal fenders because it's made with cheaper materials and it's much cheaper to produce. Plus, plastic fenders are gonna be leagues lighter than the metal ones. Like you can hold it with one hand. So if weight is an issue for you, if you're really trying to cut down on how much weight you put on your rig, then plastic fenders might be the right way to go. And finally, you're gonna sort of, in a way, add more protection to the Jeep. That's my opinion. This is where people start to debate, right? Because if you get hit really hard, then yeah, those plastic fenders are not gonna do you right like the metal ones but at the same time it's going to absorb the hit and not necessarily transfer it over to your rig unless you got hit like really hard and i mean nothing is going to save you from that but if you have plastic fenders and you kind of get dinged along the way you're let's say you're hitting a trail and you kind of scrape up against a tree or whatever then those plastic fenders will take the blow of that and not necessarily transfer that same energy like a metal fender would to the body of your vehicle. Now, the downside about plastic fenders, they are gonna fade. It's sitting out in the Florida sun, it's gonna start to whiten and start to look bad again. And then number two, of course, it's not gonna be as strong. So if it is getting hit, by different things, then it, it, it might buckle it or it might bend it, and who knows. These are the things that I just want you to think about when you are making your decision on what fenders to buy. I don't know if what I've said already kind of told you what I got, but let me show you what I got. All right, so here's a quick mock-up of the new fender flares I'm gonna be installing. These are the Bushwhacker fender flares made of ABS plastic. They're much wider than what I had before. That's really gonna help prevent all that water and mud from splashing up the side of my Jeep. Plus, it's the thin kind of fender flares, so I'm still getting a ton of articulation here. I'm not giving any of that up. And I will finally get my side marker light back. Without having that light, it, I, I feel like it was a safety issue and I'd like to have that back. I'm gonna do one side off camera just so that uh, I can kind of get the hang of it and then I'll show you guys how to install it on this side. Alright so I went and installed the flares on the passenger side just to kind of get my bearings. Now we're going to go ahead and install the flares on the driver's side and I'll walk you through that. It's the same process on both sides. Now I am not going to be showing you the part of the install where we trim the inner fenders. If you still have inner fenders that you want to continue using, just follow the instructions that Bushwhacker gives you on how to trim that down. We're going to start with the rear. I, I feel like the rear was a lot easier to install than the front which involves wiring in some stuff for the lights and all that other stuff. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna find the inner brackets that hold the fender to the vehicle. And you can look for the numbers D6, D5, and D9, or D5, D6, and D9. Uh, D stands for driver. So the other parts that say P on it, like P6, P9, that's for the passenger side. So just look for anything that says D and that you'll know that that's the driver's side. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add these little clips here uh, to the edges of some of these. The one that's D9, there's nothing for that, so you could put that aside. This is basically what allows you to put a screw through and then it holds the fender in place. 
on one side it has this area that's raised up a little bit and that's what the screw will bite into the other side is flat so the flat will go to the outside so I already started one right here the best way I found to get these on because they are a bit tight is to kind of just split it with a uh, flathead screwdriver like this just a little bit to kind of get it open and then once you have that somewhat open you just have to kind of jimmy this thing in there until you get it to bite a little bit so once you kind of got it in like that just go ahead and slide it until the holes line up all right so those clamps have been attached so one here one here again flat side on the outside and then the bumpy part on the inside and then i have that installed here as well one two three and four all right so the piece we're going to start out with is d6 and this is the part that goes towards the back of the vehicle now you're going to line up this hole this hole this hole and then all these holes down here to the holes that correspond to this these two you can reach right behind it with that you are just going to use the bolts that they provide bolt washer put that through your uh, through your bracket same thing on this one and then we're just going to slide that in there and then it will go ahead and get the bolt started in the back for these ones because some of these holes are not accessible from the rear the way bushwhacker wants you to install it the ones where you cannot get to the back you actually just use push pins so here's a push pin here now over here there is a riv nut from my old install but that actually works out in my favor because instead of just putting a push pin i can actually put in the bolt that i had there before which will hold this a lot more securely all right, now that these three are secure, we can go ahead and tighten down these two bolts here. When you're tightening this down, do not over tighten it to the point where the plastic starts to get deformed at the bottom. If that happens, you're gonna have a very, very hard time putting your fenders over it because it's gonna bulge. So you want it tight enough to hold this and it's not moving, but not so tight that you start to squish the plastic and it starts to become deformed at the bottom. All right, moving on to D5. This is the front of the vehicle, by the way, so that, that gives you some reference. These are also push pins as well. You just line up those holes. But again, I was lucky enough to have a riv nut down here, so we're gonna use a bolt for that. But normally for you, you would be using a push pin there as well. And then last but not least is D9. That goes right here. That's also a push pin, but I also have a riv nut there already. With the inner brackets mounted, we now have to prepare the fender itself. For the rear, there's nothing to do with them except to add the rubber strip included in the kit. We place it on the edge of the fender that will be pressed up against the body of your Jeep to protect the paint. Working from one end and removing the adhesive cover a little bit at a time, slip the edge of the fender into the groove of the rubber strip. Make sure that the adhesive on the outside is oriented so that it will be pressed up against the Jeep when you install it. To make it easier to remove later, pull a little piece of the adhesive backing to get it started and just have it dangle. The next step is to mount the fenders to the brackets we installed. Because it's plastic, there will be some warping, but it will fit over the brackets. You'll just need to do a lot of maneuvering and pulling, and it doesn't hurt to have a few curse words at the ready. Make sure to check all around that the fender is properly seated on those brackets without any gaps. Pro tip, you don't see it on the video, but I found that using a heat gun to just heat the fenders up slightly made it easier to maneuver a bit. That was easier than the first time. Word of advice, before you put this on, make sure that all those clips that we put earlier are still lined up to those holes so that they didn't move at all because you're now gonna have to screw into them and you're gonna use the screws that they give you and you can use an awl to kind of find out where that hole is, but it gets a little tough because sometimes it's it's off by a lot it's there you just have to kind of find it and move things around till you get to it this was the part that took me the longest before but all you really want to do is try to get the screw started and then we can tighten it down after With the fender screwed on, you can now peel the rest of the adhesive off and then press it up against the vehicle, making sure the gap is closed up nicely. 
All right, moving on to the front, pretty much the same exact process. We're gonna go ahead and take the uh, inner brackets and put those clips on them. This time you're gonna be looking for D1, D2, and D7. D7 you can put aside because uh, there's nothing to add clips on to this one. But for D1, here's one here, two, and three, and then you have four, five, and six on the D2. All right, so for the front brackets, we're gonna go ahead and start with D1. That's gonna go right here. And you're gonna put all the bolts here. There are no push pins for this. All of them will be attached using those same bolts with a nut and a washer. Some areas like here where it gets a little thin, we're gonna use a vice grip to hold the uh, nut in place. All right, now we're going to put D2, and that goes to this hole, this hole, and this hole. These are easy to reach. This one at the very bottom is a bit of a pain, but we'll manage through it. Now, I'm going to skip this middle one for now because that inner fender still needs to go back, my, my aftermarket ones, and it bolts to this thing. So I'm going to keep that off for right now. All right, now let's go tighten everything. All right, once everything's tightened, we're gonna go ahead and attach D7. That just goes over these two, and then you put a push pin through these. Just take note that when you install these things, the lip of this needs to come to that very top where it starts to curve upwards. So make sure that when it's all lined up, that it touches basically that, that last corner before it comes to this area here. To prep the front fenders, same as before, add the rubber strip to the edge that will touch the paint of your vehicle and also peel a little bit of the adhesive backing to get it started. Once that's done, we have to install the side marker lights. Run the wire through the middle hole and with a long socket extension, hold the bolt in place inside the fender as you tighten it from the outside. Alright, so next thing we gotta do is we have to get these wires and plug it to the connector that goes to the Jeep. This goes into the Jeep and then this goes to your side marker. Now I can use the butt connectors that they give you and then we just plug them together, but I actually like a much stronger connection using this stuff. This is basically a butt connector that has a solder in it. We join it and then we use a heat gun and it basically melts the connection together. I just think it's a lot better. Now, here's the thing that I learned the first time around. This is actually backwards. So don't do black to black, white to white. I mean, it might work with yours. You're gonna have to test it. But when I did it, I found out that black goes to white and white goes to black. So we're gonna go ahead and connect that right now. I got everything pretty much set up now. I got the marker light all plugged up and good to go. I did have to remove the inner fender for me to reach that plug and then I put the inner fender back on. One thing I did forget to mention, we also have to add one of these clips to this thing, making sure that the screw part is pointing upwards. Now let's just run some alcohol along here, get rid of any oils so that the adhesive will stick better.
Looks awesome, right? Like, I now I'm happy. Like, now I'm ecstatic. Like, I don't know, it just looks full now. It looks like it was meant to look beefy and not like this thinned out kind of Jeep. It looks like it has some girth to it. it. Looks like it's flatter at the bottom versus it looking like this tall stack of a vehicle. Like, you know what I mean? Like it just, yeah, I am digging the look of this. Yeah, it is plastic, so I won't be able to stand on this anymore, which means I am gonna have to pretty much start bringing a step stool around if I wanna walk around get around the top of the Jeep. But we're a short family. We could be overlanding with a Fiat and we would still need to bring a step stool. So what exactly was the mistake I made and what did I do to fix it? Was it that I put on the wrong fenders and I fixed that mistake by putting in the fenders I wanted? Hardly. No, the mistake I made, which I am giving myself the grace to make because of inexperience, was that I was just too excited and I was saying yes to everybody and I wanted the channel to grow that I didn't really think about how that might affect, one, my reputation, where people might be like, well, you're putting up some crappy sh or it's messing up the rig or what I envisioned for it. I guess what I'm saying is the way I'm fixing this mistake going forward is that I am done with saying yes to everybody. Unless you're a company that we all know, or you're a company that a lot of us have been watching and we want to try out your products and people are going on YouTube to look for reviews, I will gladly review those things for you. And I am so glad that I've worked with companies like that, people like Lightforce and people like Zero Breeze, My Medic, uh, Midland Radio, Front Runner. These are the people that we know in this industry. But there are companies, and I won't say from where and who, who are sort of using us influencers as a way to kind of break into our market with knockoff products or subpar products or products that won't last. And you know who they are because you're gonna see the same exact product like on Amazon, but with different company names on them. They're just mass influencing right like they're just hitting up every influencer they can because they're trying to like saturate our market with it and i don't like that like i would rather review high quality products or products that a lot of you don't even know about but could get good use out of companies that we know are committed to the industry right like companies that we know make some kick-ass products and it doesn't always have to be u.s based like that's a great thing we have some amazing u.s based companies but there are also some overseas companies that make some amazing stuff that are committed to overlanding committed to the outdoors companies that have been doing this for a really really long time and those are the kind of things i want to bring to you 2023 is just going to be the year of like nope not going to do it like i'm not going to just say yes to everybody i would rather work with companies that make some amazing products and build relationships with them the way i've been building relationships with some of these companies now and that is the resolution for this channel but anyway that's it i hope you found this video helpful i am sorry about my rant if you did enjoy it, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and also consider supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to make more content like this. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time. The funny thing is the company that sent me the original fenders Two people from their company emailed me today and the email was exactly the same with just different names at the bottom and it sounded something like, oh, we've been following you for a while and we really like your channel and we're wondering if you want to uh, review this. I'm like, you realize we've worked already together before, right? Like, do y'all not keep a record of this stuff? It's almost like they're just scouring the internet. Like, which influencer can we find to help push our products? Come on.